We're back for part three of this photo moment special. We are going to be looking at the Atomos Ninja Inferno and an issue that I've got in here that I'm calling the Atomos Conundrum. Good morning and welcome back to part three of this three-part session of today's photo moment. Remember part one, we looked at the GH5S and its high ISO capabilities, talked about how to set it up, talked about the, some of the shots we get out of it, did some comparisons, pretty awesome stuff. Part two, we looked at how to grade V-log footage in an SDR, no, sorry, we also looked at how to grade the V-log footage on an SDR timeline in part one. In part two, we looked at how to set up a Final Cut Pro 10 timeline for HDR, for high dynamic range. Now in part three, we are continuing on with this high dynamic range idea, but using the footage from here, and you may have spotted a, a problem on the timeline before. We're gonna talk about what that problem is, and hopefully somebody out there can help me solve this, because right now, where it stands, Atomos hasn't been able to help me, Apple hasn't gotten back to me about it, and I'm at a loss because I'm looking at this going, I, 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 can't, I, can't, I can't do this, this doesn't work. So here's the issue. Uh, let me get my Final Cut set back up over here, and... Let's take a look at this thing. Okay, so we are in my HDR timeline here. Just a quick little recap, uh, or HDR uh, project rather. This library is set up for wide, wide gamut HDR. If we look at one of the uh, one of the clips on the timeline here, if we open up, open up this timeline, open up this project, you can see that it is in fact set to wide gamut HDR Rec 2020. So this is all HDR stuff. Let me select everything on here and just remove all of the stuff that's on there. Remove attributes, and we're gonna remove everything. And we're back now to a native vlog file. Okay, let's expand this out. So this is the native vlog file. And let's turn off the HDR previewing. There we go. You can see quite clearly up here that we have all of our lovely, lovely data in here from vlog. There's our darkest shadows are well above zero. Our brightest highlights are well below 100. This is fabulous. This is what we want to see when looking at a shot that was done in vlog. Every shot you can see in here. That dynamic range is quite broad and compressed so that we can pull this out and get a very, very beautiful scene. The standard workflow is, let's find a good shot for this. It's, uh, we'll start with, let's do, let's do that one. Okay, we're gonna start here. So the standard workflow is you would take this shot, you'd actually do this before you even add it to the timeline, but you can do it anytime. Go to the inspector, go to the camera let setting, and enable Panasonic VLOG or whatever log you're shooting with. But you know, obviously I shot this on Panasonic. The shot looks pretty good, but look at the waveform. The shadows have gone super dark, which, okay, that's fine, because I can just lift them back up again. But they're clamped. It has cut off the shadows on here. Now, if I go up here and go into a color grade and go, okay, well, maybe it's just showing me that it's cut off below zero, and you put the data's there, right? Well, I'm going to lift up these shadows. I should just lift up the master. And look at that. It's clamped. This, my friends, is no bueno. We have actually lost data. Look at, look at how terrible the shot looks now. All of my shadow details just completely clamped out. This is awful. This is not what we're supposed to be getting. So this is shot high ISO on the, uh, the ISO 2500 on the GH5S. It's shot 10-bit 60p to ProRes. This should be amazing, but something's wrong. This is the problem that no one seems to have an answer to. Animos has said, well, there's possibly a setting in Final Cut, so it is, it's trying to, it's basically moving it into the wrong color space. I can't find that setting anywhere. It doesn't seem to exist. I'm at a total loss. So then I thought, okay, let's just make sure that it's obviously not the camera, that there's not some gen general Final Cut wide problem happening. So I set up in the studio a series of shots to, to compare to. And here's, here's what I've set up. Let me bring this up over here. I shot comparing... Oh, Siri, be quiet. I shot, here we go, a bunch of really exciting stuff in here. Let's uh, go into list view here so we can see the names on here. Uh, we're gonna look at my test twos, the test ones. I had a little failure in there, so test twos. I shot on the Ninja Inferno, 5994 at 422 10-bit, and then 5994 at 420 8-bit. And then internally to the GH5S, 5994 8-bit, because that's what you can do max, and 2997 10-bit. So I've got two 10-bits, two 8-bits, 59s, 29s, blah, blah, blah. It's got the whole thing in here. So these are identical shots. These shots are, are incredibly compelling and exciting and sexy shots. These are, uh, let's see, bring up the right project here. And let's do this now. Let's bring that out. Oh, it looks like I didn't reset everything. Sorry about that, folks. Let's make sure there's no LUTs applied. And we have nothing applied to these shots at all. 
remove attributes, there's, oh, there's a custom LUT. Okay, we're totally blank now. So this is what I shot. It, clearly very exciting. It is a gray curtain with a light shining on it. So we've got some pretty dark shadow areas in here, especially up in there, some pretty bright highlights in there. And you can see the full shot here. These first two were shot on the Inferno. These last two were shot internally. There is a slight gamma shift between these. These should be identical, but there's a slight gamma shift happening, which Adamo says could be attributed to the exact same issue with the clamping that I'm about to show you. Again, they don't have an answer for that. There should not be a difference. There should be no gamma applied to the shot on capture, but for some reason there is something a little bit different here. But let's just, let's just forget about that part for now. Forget about that. We're looking at two, so there's shot number one, ninja, two, ninja, three, internal, four, internal. I'm gonna start with the internal shots. Let's take both of these, go to the inspector, go to the camera light, and apply the Panasonic V-Log. And now we're seeing what we should be seeing. The shadows have stretched all the way down to zero. The highlights have stretched up quite high. So now you can see just how big the dynamic range was on this shot. Look at the highest highlights. Remember, I haven't done anything else except apply the LUT. We're talking three, we'll just call it 300. We're talking, we've got 300 nits of brightness in here versus the 100 where we are standard. Now this shot right here, it's clamping. You can see that clamping, but just like we talked about in the previous video, which if you haven't watched yet, you probably should, version part two of this, we are seeing clamping because we're on an SDR monitor. Even if this was an HDR monitor, you on YouTube would not be seeing it because I'm not broadcasting in HDR, so there's clamping on there. But we know the data hasn't actually been cut off because we can see it on the waveform, right? This is why waveforms are so important. The data is totally there. So my highlight data, data is there, my shadow detail is there, we're good. If I wanna turn on my HDR preview, you can see it clamps that down, or it uh, pulls that down as raw values and we see all the detail is actually there. So yay, okay. This is what's supposed to happen. This is what happens when I shoot internally. So now I go to the external shots, this one shot on the Inferno, and I add this camera LUT, same LUT, and it does exactly what we saw before. It's clamping off the shadows, completely cutting them off. And if I go into my, my grade here, my uh, grading tools and I raise them up, that data is gone. It's just gone. That's not okay. Something really, really funky and weird is happening in here. Now the workaround, although I'm not, this is not a workaround I'm comfortable with, the workaround is to apply the LUT as a secondary LUT. And then it works. It doesn't do this weird clamping. But then I no longer have the ability to apply that secondary LUT for uh, an effect or whatever. So this is not how it's supposed to work. I want it to work the way it's supposed to work. But just to show you, if you are in this situation and no one's got an answer, and if you've got an answer, please put it in the comments down below. But if you don't have the answer and you're trying to figure out how to work with this stuff, here's what we can do. We go in and let's leave these shots as no camera LUT applied. So we go back to none and there's all my data back again. And in fact, let me just, let's do a full reset on these things again. Edit, remove attributes, uh, yep, take off the color wheels. Okay, now we're full, fully back to the native spot. Now I go into my, um, my effects browser. I look for my custom LUT. This is the one that comes with Final Cut 10. This is a third party one, ignore it. This one that's called custom LUT, the one that comes with Final Cut 10. I take that and I drag it on to there. Nothing happens yet because I have to go into the inspector and wrong one, there we go. This inspector, there's the custom LUT. And now see, here's all my creative LUTs, but I don't get to apply a creative LUT. I have to apply my V-Log LUT here. And now it looks the way it should. See, now it has brought this up and it's done it differently. It hasn't done, expanded the full range up to 400, but I could stretch it manually. But all my data is there, my shadow's not getting clamped. So now I can go in, I can go into my grade and I could, um, you know, if I was trying to master this for HDR, I could pull my shadows down, pull my highlights way up and let's go, you know, all the way up to you know, a thousand nits on there, make it really, really bright. And now I'd have this really high dynamic range scene. Again, what you're seeing on my monitor, on your monitor is clamped because this is all SDR, but the actual data is there. If we look at the raw values, the data is intact. So there is the conundrum. If you have any idea why this is happening, how to fix it, please tell me in the comments. I'm sure other people wanna know since Adamus doesn't have an answer for me right now. And like I said, I'm trying to get some uh, information out of Apple, see if they have any idea what's happening. But right now I'm in a position, I'm in my situation right now is I cannot shoot my project in ProRes and master in Final Cut for HDR. I'm gonna master in Final Cut. I'm not going to something else because I know Final Cut. I'm not gonna learn a whole new editing app to work on this project. Um, and I love the coloring tools that are in Final Cut right now. So we gotta get this fixed. So that's where we're at right now. Unfortunately, we're stuck. Hopefully somebody out there has an answer for me. Okay, 
that's it. That was nice and simple one. Um, we're going to wrap the show up right there. If you have any questions that you asked throughout the three shows, if you're watching live that I didn't get to, just stick them into the comments down below once this thing gets published as a published video. If you're watching this, not live, so the majority of you. Um, if you have any questions, comments, feedback, whatever you know what to do, stick them in the comments down below. As always, if you haven't yet subscribed, do the subscribe, hit the bell, hit the like button, all that good stuff. You know what to do. And once again, if you feel like you've learned something from this show or any other show that you watch, if I can find the right card, there we go. Remember our value for value model brought to me by my good friend, Chris Fenwick, who suggested this, where basically the idea is if you have gained value from today's show, any of today's shows, or any of any of my shows, and you feel like uh, you've learned something of value, put some value back into the show. Go over to photojoseph.com slash support and contribute via Patreon or PayPal or use shop at my, uh, my affiliate store. Or of course, if you have a big, huge challenge and you want some personal help with it, you can hire me directly as a consultant. Okay. That is it. It is Friday. It is the weekend. Starting soon here. Starting in about an hour. No, I'm kidding. Uh, it's, it's, it's the weekend. I hope you guys have a great one. I hope you uh, had a good week, and we'll see you next week for another Photo Moment Show. Bye-bye.